Hey YouTube, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at running 192 gigabytes of DDR5, 6400 megahertz on a Ryzen-based system. We're going to be testing this on a Ryzen 9 7950X with a gigabyte X670E Horus Master. So the tutorial or on, on the how-to on how to do this it's going to be based off of the results that somebody posted on Reddit a couple months ago. The link to that Reddit post will be in the description of the video. So shout out to Andy Metzen. I do give credit to testing this being the pioneer, kind of the trailblazer, at getting such high capacity RAM. Now, the results posted on Reddit are for 128 gigabytes of memory. So I thought I would test on 192 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and that's what you can see there. So, with well, that being said, uh, let's get into the guide on how to get 6,000 megahertz gear one mode on 192 gigabytes of RAM. On a Ryzen 9 7950X with a gigabyte Aorus Master motherboard, you can see in there. So I already started loading up the RAM kits. So pretty much the way this is gonna work, you're going to need to minimize the amount of variability because there are very few 192 gigabyte UDIM kits. So what I had to do is I have to get two separate 96 gigabytes. So, you know, like for a total of four sticks, that's 192 gigabytes. So each one of these DIMMs from G-Skill are Hynix MDI and they are rated to run at 6,400 mega transfers. So what that means is two of these is gonna be 96 off of one kit. The, this is the kit I'm using. And then another one will give you another 96 gigabytes. So two of them together, that's 192. So previously I was running this, a single kit of 96 gigabytes at 6400 successfully, pretty much since, you know, May or so of last year. So it's been a long time now. So I know that this can do 96 at 6400. Now what we're going to attempt is 192, so that's four sticks of memory. Uh, highest capacity available today on UDIM, at least at time of filming, because I know that there are going to be higher densities that come out later, especially for the RDIM for like Threadripper, for example. Uh, but for now, 90, 192, we're going to see what we can do. So we should be able to get around 5,600 to 6,000 and possibly faster, but it's going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on the IMC on the CPU. So the CPU's IMC, we're going to need some luck in terms of silicon lottery there. And the other piece is the motherboard, the actual way that Gigabyte laid out the trace wires, because we are going to have to adjust the impedance or resistance values manually in the BIOS in order to get this to work. If you're not familiar with that, I'll probably do a deep dive at some point, but that is the secret to getting this to run four sticks of DDR5 dual rank, so that means 128 gigabytes or 192 gigabytes. We're not talking about 64 gigabytes across four sticks because that's easy. Uh, what we're going to do is the, the difficult things, which is 128 or 192. So in this case, we're going for 192. So first things first, you want to have the first kit on one of the channels, meaning normally you would have them offset. You would have a2 and B2. So you, you normally would install the RAM. If you're only running two sticks, you'd install them in the second and the fourth slot from the CPU. But because we are going to run four, I need to minimize the variability between these two different kits. So I want one kit to be on channel A, and I want the other kit to be on channel B. So here we have channel A. I've already put the first stick of the first kit in A1, now the second stick will go right next to it. Oftentimes people think you need to offset them, but if you want to reduce variability, because we have four sticks, not two sticks, four sticks, you wanna put the same kit on the same channel. So you're gonna want them to be together. Why do we do this? I have to stress this point because people are probably not gonna understand and they're probably gonna post something in the comments that shows that they clearly don't understand what I'm talking about. What we are doing this because this kit of RAM was manufactured at a certain point on the assembly line and the the memory binning is from a specific batch. The second kit came from some other point in time. So it may have either the same 
or it could be slightly different in terms of things like the micro impedances and those sort of things with the way the DRAM was binned. So we want the, those to be on individual channels separate from each other to reduce any kind of variability. You don't want to split kit one, for instance, from like May of last year. You don't want to put that RAM on channel A and B. Then you're going to put like the newer kit next to on channel A and channel B because that's going to confuse the motherboard. It's not really going to know what to do. So you're going to most likely have a harder time hitting a higher speed when you're running four sticks. So now I'm going to put this one right next to it and we're going to kind of show what it looks like once it's all installed. So if you can see in there, see what I've done is I've put my original kit of 96 gigabytes on channel A. Now I will take the second kit and I'll put those on channel B so they are isolated from the channel A RAM. So now that I've got those installed, we're going to turn the power on. Okay, there we go. So now it's going to attempt the training. Code 15 means memory training on AM5. So now all we do is we just sit and wait to see what this ends up doing. And this is the long training process with DDR5. The other way, if you don't have one of those seven segment displays like that, that's showing 15, uh, almost all, pretty much all the motherboards do have these LEDs. That's the DRAM light. That DRAM light you, means that it's doing memory training for those that don't have the seven segment. But the seven segment is invaluable, almost invaluable, if you're attempting to get dual rank, high density DDR5 working. So that's why it is kind of bizarre that this little, they call it seven segment display. Because, and the reason why it's called seven segment display is because the number eight if you break that up into to seven different little lights, it's seven LEDs that make up that number eight. And there's two of them, so that's why they call it the seven segment display. Just a little bit of nerd trivia there. So we're gonna let this go. Okay, looks like it's doing something. Something's happening now. Lights are coming up, that's good. We got our lights now on the GPU. We got our lights on Avermedia. Avermedia's blinking, that's a good sign. It might do a double take. So now here we go, 15 again, so it might be doing a double take. But now I've got my RGB fan lights on. So that means that it is progressing. So that's a good sign. But now it's doing a second attempt, I guess, or whatever it's doing. It'll probably train to like 40 or 3600 or 4400 or something. It'll be some low number and we're going to have to manually set the values for the impedance numbers. So that's the only way that this is going to work. All right, the thing is, when we start doing the actual attempt for, say, 5,600 or 6,000, it'll take a long time. So you can expect more than five minutes of memory training. So you're just gonna have to set it in the BIOS and then wa literally walk away, go do some chores or go do something, uh, and then come back and then it will probably be up. If it doesn't come up, then it, you know that it'll be, it'll either hang at like 0D or something on the display there, or it will just come into the BIOS at a lower clock speed, like it'll revert back. So, all right, fans are ramping up, things are happening. I think it's starting to do its thing. There's the post, we're going into the BIOS. Okay, so we're in the BIOS and this is what it did. I tried to load my original XMP profile 6400. Obviously that's not, not going to work because we're using the wrong impedance values. So it's gonna come up at 3600 megahertz right here, 196, so that's 192 gigabytes total. Okay, so once we're in the BIOS, the first thing we need to do is we need to fix this. We need to manually set the multiplier. Let's try 56. So that's gonna be 5600. Let's try to boot to 5600 across 192 gigabytes. So uh, this thing, I'll just set this to auto because it should be able to do gear one because we're under 6,000. And then we want to go to advanced memory settings. 
These things are all three of them are auto. Let's just leave that the way it is for now. Memory sub timings. So at the very bottom of this list, there are the processor CK drive strengths C and the CA drive strengths. This is what we're going to change. So Proct ODT, which is this one, processor ODT, Proct ODT, we're going to do 48 ohms. Let's do that. That's kind of in the middle. Now, what we're doing here, for those that don't understand what's happening, the impedance is a resistance value. So if you know anything about electronics, there's voltage current and there's the resistance of the electronic component that the electric current needs to pass through. So you don't want, it's, it is a balancing act, you don't want the impedance to be too high because if it's too high, you get something called attenuation. You get loss of the signal. The electric signal from the CPU is going to the memory, but if it has way too much resistance, way too much impedance, it's going to kill off that signal. So the signal never reaches the memory. You'll get transmit reattempts. You'll get errors. You'll get high latency. You just really bad stuff. On the flip side of that, you don't want the resistance to be too low. Because if the resistance is too low and you can just send any willy-nilly signal across that line, you get reflections. You get signals that will clash, bounce back into the CPU when you don't want that. Or you'll get RAM that tries to transmit and it'll bounce and go back into the RAM. So you'll get what they call reflection. Reflection of electronic signals is a bad thing. So we don't want the resistance to be too low. So that's why I'm going to set it to 48 because it's somewhere in the middle. See, up here, we have really high impedance. And then down here, we have really low impedance. So down here is probably going to result in reflection of the signal. Up here is going to result in attenuation of the signal. So we don't want that. So I'm going to manually set 48 ohms for the Proct ODT. Anyone who's ever done any overclocking on first-gen Ryzen probably remembers Proct ODT. If you were trying to run 3200 megahertz DDR4 across either 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes back in the day. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at Proct CADS. So I need to figure out where that one is. This one. Processor CA drive strength. So for this one, we're going to actually go really low on this one. I'm going to try 30 ohms, see if that works. Uh, a lot of this is going to come down to the motherboard. The motherboard layers, the motherboard traces is what we're, we're modifying the variable resistance values or impedance values of, on these wires. That's effectively what we're attempting to do here. So that the IMC has a better shot at running at these higher speeds across all those memory modules. So now we're going to look at DQDS. DQ, I think this one, DRAM, DQ, drive strength. So this one, we're going to do 34 ohms, really low. DRAM, DQDS, Proct, DQDS. This one, we're going to do 34.3. So we're lowering the resistance, but the thing is, you have, to be, you have to be aware that if you encounter reflection, the system will be unstable. But I'm doing this just to try to make it easy on the IMC to be able to send the signals and not hit a wall of bricks trying to get through all those RAM chips. Next, we're going to check the RTT NOM, the nominal write. Let's set this to RZQ460, so we're going to go right in the middle. And then DRAM ODT Impedance RTT NOM RD, we're going to set this one also to, I think this is return zero Q for also that one. Okay. And then RTT right, let's do this one. So this one will do 120. And then RTT park, so this one will do five. That's 48. And then RTT park, RTT, this one will do 48 also. So I'm gonna try these. I'm not sure what I should do with this though. Let me just make sure. Okay, so we're just going to try these. We're going to attempt those. Now, as for the memory profile itself, just to make things easy, I don't want to change too many variables right now. So I'm going to leave that the way it is, and I'm just going to adjust these bus config 
values here to see if we can get that to come up. Let's try 1.25. Let's go up a little bit higher on vCore SOC. So we'll do 1.25 on vCore SOC. You shouldn't really need 1.3. Uh, let me see. I'm just trying to go through my notes here from what I did last time when I attempted this. VDDIO can do, I think we can do like 1.4 on this. Yeah, 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1 .1. VDD, VDDQ, VDDQ, this can be 1.4, 1. 1. I think VDD also should be 1.4, yeah. All right, we'll manually set those three. This I don't think I need to change. And then we'll just let it decide which U clock, if it wants to do U clock one to one or U clock one to two, that's fine, I don't really care. Some people try to overclock the fabric. I'm just going to leave mine at 2 gigahertz. It doesn't really matter. It barely does anything. As long as it's a, it's at 2,000, you're fine. But we're, we're trying to only mess with the memory here, so I don't really want to change too much stuff that's related to the CPU itself. So we're going to leave that alone. You know what? Maybe we should just do like 6,000. Just do 6,000. Just go for broke and see if I can get this to post on these values. All right, one more thing, just gonna go in here again. Let me double check these numbers. Drive strength, we'll also do 30 actually, just to make that match. All right, I'll just leave that one on auto, I guess. And then, and then the last thing I wanna do, I wanna turn power down, enable, enable, instead of auto, and gear down, enable. Or not gear down, gear down, auto. Memory context restore, enable. So I wanna manually enable both of those. All right, I'm just going to try it at 6,000. We're going to see if, if we can do 192 gigabytes at 6,000. So we're going to save this just to kind of show the nice thing about Gigabytes BIOS. It shows you what it's going to do. We're going to set that to auto. 4830, so these are what we're changing. We're bumping VSOC a little bit, 0.05. Manually setting these to 1.4. Okay, so we're gonna go and attempt this. Save configuration, yes. All right, so back to memory training again. So we're gonna sit here and wait. And now this can take a very long time to complete. So uh, I may, I'll just probably leave the camera rolling, but I might cut some of this out because we could be sitting here for like eight minutes of it just doing its thing, so. We'll probably cut this and come back. Okay, so it actually didn't take that long to train. I was surprised. I was like deleting out some of the old videos on my camera while waiting, so I missed the part where it did the post beep. But anyway, as you guys can see here, so I went ahead and we attempted 6,000, or 60 as a multiplier, so that's 6,000 frequency, and it looks like we got it. You can see it right there. Once we go into Windows, it'll be at 6,000. Uh, and we'll look at that in a second, test the stability. So it looks like it did also select gear one, this is as far as I would go in terms of like the maximum speed possible on gear one. If I'm going to be running 6400, which we could attempt, but we'll do that later. I want to see if I can get gear one 6000 on 192 gigabytes stable in Windows. So it looks like all we needed was 1.25 volts and 1.4.4 on the memory. Uh, you know, we could also attempt 1.35 volts on the RAM, but just to start to see if the stability is good at the higher voltage let's go ahead and test that in windows now all right so i've been actually testing the stability of the memory now for about two hours with various different applications so this is for spoken running i actually played about three chapters just now through the story mode of the game and we haven't ran into a single problem this is pretty much it so this is 6,000 megahertz RAM at gear one mode, 192 gigabytes on a gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. And uh, these are my results. Seems like it, it's working pretty good. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.